in or? Yeah, but that's it. But could you close the door? It would be nice. Okay. You are? Yeah, I already said so. Can you do Okay. <laughs> okay. So, um, as uh, he already pointed out, uh, getting hungry right after lunch uh, might seem a little bit of a contradiction. But um, the point is, uh, I'm not able to teach you RxUI or Rx in 50 minutes. So what I want to do is just to show you what's possible with it and make you hungry to, deep to dig deeper into this topic. My name is Thomas Burkhardt. I'm an uh, independent developer or and freelancer. And yeah, you find my, uh, my information here. And uh, if you are on Slack, you will find me as Escomateur. Perhaps you, we met before. <laughs> okay. So, um, yeah, reactive extensions. The thing is that um, Rx, uh, reactive UI, um, doesn't work without reactive extensions. So before we can, can come to a reactive UI, we have to have a little bit, a closer look onto Rx. Who of you has already used reactive extensions? Okay, okay. <laughs> yeah. Um, the interesting thing is that um, reactive or the reactive concepts uh, are much wider known in the Java community like uh, frameworks like React or Java Rx. And uh, few people know that uh, reactive extensions uh, were de um, developed or invented by Microsoft developers. And uh, what is Rx? Actually, Rx is link for events. So we have a lot of events to in today's app, and a lot of them are completely asynchronous. and. Uh, Okay, just one second. <laughs> okay, uh, and uh, with, uh, with traditional ways um, of programming, pro programming an app, um, it's quite cumbersome. You have to, um, uh, you have a lot to work with, diff uh, with separate tasks that, uh, that wait for, uh, for these events. And uh, Rx uh, makes this way easier. With Rx, all events are from an event source are, um, the oh no, the, 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 how do I get the, ah, good. Um, all uh, events are published from the event sources through uh, observables. That's the, t uh, it's the uh, type uh, that is used. And um, if you want to use this event, you can uh, uh, append um, a pi processing pipeline with uh, operators um, that you that, that are similar uh, to link, like um, uh, like select many or aware or which is pretty interesting throttle, for example, which allows you to debounce uh, an event. So for example, if you uh, get a lot, of a lot of events in a very short time and you only want to get events um, in, in a bigger time frame, you can just use, for example, the throttle operator. We will uh, see an um, example later. And uh, in the actual subscription that you do on the observable, like, uh, like here, that you have um, console subscribe, <coughs> then you get an, um, an a function or a lambda uh, expression, and the actual data that you that you get through the event is passed as parameters to the lambda. So the important thing is that um, this whole processing pipeline is built through extension methods uh, without any side effects. So it's uh, more like functional programming. Uh, you you see very concisely that is the event source and which processing uh, uh, steps are done until the actual um, processing of the event happens in the subscription. One, of, uh, one type of event source uh, are subjects. Subjects are actually uh, a type 
that allows you to create programmatically events, which is, uh, there's several applications where it's very helpful. And as you see in the, actually this is a, a simplified pseudocode uh, of, um, uh, of, uh, of the type. Uh, it offers one uh, as a subscribe method where you can pass this uh, the different actions. The on next is the typically ones that we saw before that you say, okay, subscribe and a lambda uh, function, but you also can uh, pass another um, uh, action which is called when the Event has event pipeline has completed when no other event will come, and you can pass another one that will always ca will catch every exception that happens through uh, while processing uh, this uh, this processing pipeline. And on the other side, you have this on next, on completed, and, and on, on error. So um, with this methods, you can queue events to this uh, to a subject, and on the other side, you can subscribe to the subject to uh, consume the events. And uh, interesting here is that the return type of a subscription is an I disposable. And uh, the idea behind this is the moment you dispose th uh, the object that you get back from the subscribe method, the subscription is canceled. So no further processing from this point on. Now to have an example, um, I know I don't know how, how many of you uh, use uh, Xamarin Forms. Okay, most of you. So, and how many use mes Messaging Center? Ah, <laughs> Glenn, shame on you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Ac actually, Messaging Center has some serious uh, drawbacks. One of the things is it's not typed. Yeah. So, uh, and the other one is I have. If I look at code, I have no idea where, what's the source, for example, if I see a subscription, uh, in which class is it. It's, uh, I, 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 I cannot use uh, all the nice things uh, from Visual Studio to um, find usages, for example, because it's just stri string values. So now uh, for this, I want to show you how we could solve this with R Rx. We have, to, uh, we define an, uh, an interface which will have which will pu publish an observable string. I keep um, string as, uh, as data for the message currently, but you could use any other type as well. And, um, I, uh, and it has another method, queue messages, which uh, are used to, to send a message over this broker object. To make this work, uh, I use uh, a very handy um, component is called Splat. It's a service locator, so that we are able to access the our um, message broker object from anywhere in the code. So um, I create a me uh, an instance of this uh, mes 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 message broker interface. I register it with Splat, and when I want to use it, I can just uh, retrieve it with this get service and for example, queue message. Now let's see in, in Visual Studio. Okay, so here we have our, um, is, it, is it big enough? Yeah. yeah, okay. We have our interface definition and uh, here's the implementation, which is pretty simple. Uh, I have an, a private uh, uh, property, which is actually a subject, which we have seen before. And as a subject um, also implements e, uh, e observable, I can just uh, pu uh, publish it publicly as an e observable of strings. And uh, I have the queue message, and all that it does is message subject dot on, uh, on next. Now, if I want to use this, right. okay, here we instantiate it, uh, we re register it, and I do here a subscription that will make us a, a debug output each time 
um, um, a message is received. And in actually, we are now on the, we are here in the platform project. And in my PCL, I have a button click handler, which lo looks like this. I get the message broker through splat, and then I call Q message. And uh, so it's pretty clear who receives the message and, and who, who is uh, who is act, uh, who is really active at this moment. And if I start this. Okay, and now we see each click is passed through the subscription down to the um, to the native uh, to the uh, native project. Another very uh, really uh, oh why is this was excellent hatte ich dachte ich habe ich nicht also ich duplicate man ja okay another uh, very hel uh, very um, handy uh, operation is to use sub subjects is uh, publishing OS callbacks to your app. For example, this is an interface for a uh, reactive uh, media player that um, I have written, uh, where you can see uh, all the events that, uh, that you get from such a player, errors, player states, positions, buffer states, are published as observable. So uh, if you subscribe to this observables, in your application, they will automatically update it every time a new event happens. And you don't have to, um, uh, to subscribe uh, to register several event handlers. It's much easier and much cleaner if you look at, uh, at such an interface. The nice thing is that uh, there is an it's, it's a, there's an, it's a function. It's actually it, the signature looks horrible, but it's uh, so I, me too. I uh, always copy it just from the uh, from the docs if I uh, need it. You can convert any .NET event to an observable and then use all the um, Rx operators on the events. For example, uh, I use here from event pattern on the uh, connectivity connectivity changed event from the uh, from James Montenegro's um, connectivity plugin. So uh, after I have done this. And uh, I've published the connection state observable that I get through Splat, for example. I can do at any point just a subscribe on it, and I will be informed on every change of the connection. And the, the important thing is, um, it doesn't. It's completely um, independent uh, of the. Um, um uh, yeah, sorry. Um, it's not limited to one subscriber, so many at, at many parts of your application you can subscribe to such an observable and you will be informed. And the nice thing is, because uh, of this uh, uh, res um, creation function, there is the, uh, uh, the um, event registration and unregistration uh, method given, and uh, the moment that you dispose such an observable or such a subscription, the event will be released. So you don't have to care uh, about that uh, after the last one uses the event that to release the event. Yeah, Because uh, if you, you only have to always uh, dispose your subscriptions and you are done. And this makes, makes it much, uh, much, much safer to work. There are two different ways, two different sorts of observables. We will see it's, it's important because uh, it next you, you see the second one. There are hot observables like .NET events, mouse events, OS callbacks, or even subjects. And uh, they issue events all the time. And they exist 
uh, as long as they uh, not as they are not um, disposed. Cold observables on the other side, um, they are the moment created and uh, and run the moment the first one subscribes to them. And one of uh, except uh, one example would be a converted async function, for example. So uh, you can convert any async function to an observable. I have here an exa uh, a, a little example out of um, out of the demonstration app that I have, where I query the weather on certain cities, and this would be the typical um, so, uh, the typical uh, version you do uh, with async and await, for example. So, um, okay, if you look at the code, you can you uh, it's it's you can read it what it does, but it's not very clear. If you if I just look on it, okay, uh, because uh, I have to follow all the steps in it and, and it's, it's, it's the, iter uh, the iterations. If I convert this to an observable, it looks like this. And uh, in the beginning, it's, it's you have to get a little bit used to to this uh, to this way to uh, to write, but uh, it's very easy to follow. Okay, we get back an, a result object from get weather, which has uh, in it uh, a collection of cities, and I do a select many, so I flatten out the list. I transform every city object like I get it from the rest RP call, and I create a new item view model for my list view from it. Then I convert the sequence of objects that I uh, get from the select many with two lists again into one list. And this here is very handy. It's an observe on. There you can define on which thread context uh, the result should be processed. And with the observe on um, Erica's main thread scheduler, you are sure you are on the uh, on the application uh, on at the UI thread. So um, that when I assign here to my bound um, uh, to my, uh, to my um, item source for my list view, I'm sure that the assignment happens on the UI thread and not on another thread. And if we go, let's see. This works. Sometimes you have to rebuild. I have not found out yet when you have to rebuild and when not. Sometimes it works just without. Yeah, uh, this is the Android system. Sometimes. Yeah, so sometimes <laughs> it's, it's right. Sometimes, sometimes, sometimes if you rebuild twice, it will work, yeah? And not in the first one. It's. Uh, Okay, so we have uh, here the uh, weather for several uh, European cities in the uh, in the near uh, vicinity, and um, if you look at the, I have a. This is the the, the main page model. It's uh, um, I use um, foodie from property change so that I don't have to care about. Uh, Raise notifications for uh, when if at a property change, and uh, this here is my item source for the um, for the list view, and that's all for the uh, query of the remote um, for the remote service. I use refit pr uh, the refit component for this for the rest call. I don't know uh, how many do use uh, do do know refit. 
Okay, I think we have a short moment. Refit is pretty cool because all you have to do for uh, accessing a REST RP is uh, defining an interface with an attribute where you define how your URL looks like. And actually you can also um, use parameters and these par parameters you just add here and you will um, and, uh, and you will, uh, it will get called. So I just can, in the co in code, I only call get weather. It will generate this the, uh, the call and automatically return me the, uh, the objects um, deserialized from the JSON object. So I don't have to care at all about this. I, can I only can highly recommend checking refit out. It makes life so much easier. And this here is just so again. This is the object that I get back from from the uh, fr uh, from the API. And as said, with the select, we uh, convert it to the uh, our item view model that is then bound. Here, it's uh, in the view cell. It's uh, it is bound for this. Now the nice thing uh, about um, Rx is that I, in this case, I use Rx to call an async function under the hood, and the res uh, the, uh, the result of the function is treated as an event. And I but I, and I can so I can use all the operators that I have from Rx on events on this result data. And uh, for example, if I uh, f uh, if I now want to have a list view, yeah. A refresh of the. Ah, okay. Um, I would just uh, subscribe again. Just, just uh, so each uh, if it's a code observable, every subscription triggers the the method, uh, the, the data. Yeah, exactly. Wait. Ah oh, no. Oh, okay. We have, we have first. We are, we are there first. Yeah. One of the nice thing is um, I don't know who has ha who already had the problem with calling an async function from a constructor. <laughs> I think it's pretty common. So with Rx, that's n uh, no longer a problem because um, Rx don't wait for anything. Uh, it starts the, the call and it will be handled as soon as the data is back. Yeah? So it's really like uh, more like setting up a trap for the event or for the data than to, wa to wait. And this you can do inside a constructor. So, um, and uh, the subscription and the whole processing of the, uh, of, uh, of the pipeline will be completely asynchronous from the constructor, co uh, constructor call. So um, if we look at the, this here, that fills the, that fills the list, is done inside the constructor. And uh, as I assign the result to um, my bound property, the UI will update the moment that this assignment happens. Yeah? And it doesn't matter when this happens. I just set up the call and define, okay, what should happen when the data is back? And uh, that's all. Yeah, sure. <coughs> Yeah. There's a sensor, it's uh, generating, I don't know, 100 events a second yeah. continuously. Yeah. And you want to uh, take this data yeah. and, uh, and then you have uh, maybe two or three subscripts subscribing. Yeah. They subscribe to this uh, processing pipeline. Yes, here. yes, yes, right. And then they want, each one wants to uh, create a UI display. Yeah. Sure. The individual graph sure, 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 sure. Right? So is this a hot observer or 
uh, yeah, the, uh, it, it because it's um, if this is a sensor that uh, the, uh, that creates uh, the events from itself, it would yeah. be a hot observable, yeah. So this wouldn't be created on the subscription. Uh, the subscription would react just on every uh, on any data that comes through. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Back to here. Um, as uh, I was at the point, I say um, I can use all the power of the um, Rx um, event processing pipelines on the data that I get back from this async call. Yeah. For example, I if I want now not one column but a two column display, I um, extended the uh, the fuel cell a little bit with um, another column, and I also um, extended the um, the item view model of a, uh, of another pair and the interesting part now comes in the in the rx part what i do here is i do again a select many to flatten the list and then i do a buffer of two this leads to that it takes the uh, chain of events it takes always two and handles uh, and hands them as one object out, yeah. So you could also do buffer four or, or, or else. S and then I, so I do so the the, uh, the cities object that I get here are in is in reality an array of uh, of uh, of cities. So I can uh, assign them. Again, I convert it back to a list, and uh, I do a subscribe. Actually, you can convert any enumerable to an observable. So if you have a list and you want to use the uh, Rx operators on it, you can always just call dot to observable and at the end again to list and uh, you are much more powerful than just with the normal link commands. And if you see, it's really just actually uh, just just one line more. And uh, if you think you should, you would uh, to have you would have to um, produce or convert this data in this way traditionally. You would have a lot more code to do this. Um, depends it really depends you have some uh, um, yeah, you, ha you have some tools for example you can tools, yeah, no, 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 no 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 I, I mean I mean you have a, you have some tools in Rx um, for example you can uh, throw at any part of the uh, of the processing pipeline a dot do operator where you get the actual the current value that is passed through and you can dump it out on the uh, on the console or or put a prank point there to inspect what what happens there yeah so it's it's possible um there it sometimes it, it is tricky but the important thing is that um that you can be sure that um inside this processing pipeline no other variable, no other objects outside will be modified. Yeah, so uh, you have n r you have really no side effects. You are safe of uh, of, uh, of side effects. Yeah. Well, memory wise, it's always like that. Yeah, this is. It you it needs. I, I've seen the implementation because you know for linked people. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Many people they didn't know that that uh, that's an amateur location moment. Yeah. yeah. And you have the same issue here. Or not? Okay. Actually, I I I I can't tell you. It's uh, it it you need it needs memory, sure. But uh, from a performance point, as far as I used it so far in uh, in my apps, uh, it's absolutely no problem. Uh, one question. Yeah. What is the difference between the buffer and the throttle that you mentioned? Ah, okay. Um, the throttle will only let an event out if it happens inside a certain window of time. And the buffer will, tr uh, will just group events Discrete. together, discrete, discrete and, uh, and so give them so out. So if there's nothing, nothing happened during your defined time, then no object coming out. But you 
Ra only look into one minute. Um, oh no, so, sorry, I was, I was wrong. Throttle is, um, it, uh, it makes sure that uh, um, events that uh, happen in a window that's, s let's say others. Throttle is, uh, in, in other implementation of Rx, it's called debounce. What uh, I think, w uh, which uh, brings it pretty good to a point. If you have a mechanical switch here, yeah, and you press, uh, you want to prevent that the small, a uh, lot of uh, short events that happen, yeah, before uh, before you get a stable, uh, a st a stable state, yeah. And this is what uh, what throttle does, yeah. For example, I use throttle uh, in together with the connectivity event because I don't want to be informed of a connectivity change that is only for. Five hundred for hundred milliseconds. Yeah, I only want to get informed if the ch if it changes for one second. Yeah, this is where you use fro a throttle. Yeah, wait, I have that. So, yeah, creating complex item view models. We just uh, saw this. Okay, so now we get to reactive UI. Reactive UI is a cross-platform MVVM framework based on Rx, yeah? And it's available for almost any platform. Actually, I forgot Tizen is, or Tizen is already, it's also available now. And uh, it makes life much easier because it uh, brings you this subscription model on, on events to your view model view communication. So, in general, you could say, yeah, stop awaiting. It's really like, uh, you know, if you know crazy machines, uh, you have a lot of possibilities you, uh, or event traps, I would say, uh, that just react. So, you define at one place or what type of events your UI should react to. And this in a very concise uh, and uh, clear manner. It's it requires a shift of mind. This is really one of the biggest problems when you when you start using Rx or start using uh, Reactive UI, that you uh, you have really to make a mind shift from the way you uh, you wrote programs before, and you uh, write uh, write them with Rx, yeah, because it's, m it's more sort of declarative programming. You declare you the fu the functions that should be called on events, yeah. So we try completely to await any await any waiting. Just be ready for the event at every time. One of the uh, of the base ob objects in reactive UI is the reactive object. So um, no, typically, typically you would derive your view models from reactive object, and uh, this the link to your view is done by that the uh, your view has to implement this interface, a view for view model type. For summary in forms, you, uh, we have um, predefined views that already do this. So we have a reactive content page, we have a reactive tab page, reactive for, for every page type and, uh, and most of the view types, reactive view styles, for example, we have this type uh, already defined. If you uh, do this, you get the reactive bindings commands and uh, yeah property pay, uh, property change observations which we'll see f each one uh, later on the reactive object it Im implements e notify property changed it's which is important for all that the, uh, the, the bindings will work and it has some helper functions for this but uh, even there it gets m more easy because there is a package reactive ui dot foodie which makes it almost automatically, you just have to add an attribute to the properties that should be monitored. We'll see in a moment. Reactive bindings. Okay, uh, if you use reactive UI, with, uh, you will ha you use reactive bindings instead of the normal XAML bindings. They are defined in code, in the code behind, which in the first moment, um, yeah, it doesn't lot look really uh, attractive. But uh, if you uh, work a little bit more with it, you, you understand why. They are type safe, which is not the case with uh, normal bindings. They support 
completely IntelliSense and have a built-in type conversion system. So you don't have to, uh, to write type converters uh, for, for this. And uh, target properties m must at least implement a, a notify property changed. Um, easiest way is using a reactive object. I hate it. If anybody can tell me why this file is changed every time. That's one of the mysteries of Visual Studio. Now, let's have a look. Um, I, I, to uh, get the full power of this, I, uh, I decompo decompose the, the main page uh, into, uh, it looks like now like this. The data pa template is uh, my own class now, the sitter wetter item view. And if I have a look into its constructor, constructor. I have now here, um, I get this, uh, this one activated, is called the moment uh, when on the, on the on appearing event happens. And um, this here is the actual binding, I say one way bind. This first parameter, the view model, is actually the value of this, of this, uh, of this parameter doesn't mean anything. But, you, but we needed to put it there to get the full intelligence of the uh, for, for the uh, for the uh, for, uh, for, uh, for the following parameters. So the first one is the property in your view model. The second one is the property in your view that you want to bind. So um, if I Okay, so far we, are, uh, we have only bound the, uh, the city name and the temperature. But we see also the temperature is um, it's not very nice because it's just a float and not, uh, not that, we, uh, that we have it as Celsius, for example. So now I want to, uh, I want to add the, uh, the image. Then um, this is very easy because I... Uh, again, back to English. Uh. Yeah. Um. And this is what I mean, uh, what I meant with the intelligence. I now get here, here directly the. Um, Temperature, no. But I do my binding to the code normally. Yeah. And then I use name all, so then I also have code to choose. Exactly. If you, but it's uh, something just just you get with ah, it. Okay. I see that the um, the code, uh, the intelligence with Resharpa is way better than this one. It's not not my machine here. I have to say. Ah, oh, weather icon is okay. <laughs> Found source. 
And in this case, I have to provide an empty conversion function because uh, I get a string and I want an image source. But that's all. So it's, I find it pretty convenient uh, that I, um, when I'm typing that I just get the, um, the elements that I want to bind and I'm sure that I, ah, okay. Oh. Okay. One nice thing about uh, this is um, that I can use this um, this conversion function to debug code. to debug my bindings. Okay, so I can inspect the value that I get here. And this is, uh, I think, this is a real advantage to normal bindings that I can really say, see, okay, is at this point the value there or not? Yeah. Yeah, if you yeah if you if you have one, but uh, here's really just add an, uh, another lambda uh, behind, yeah, and you can you can do it, yeah. Okay, I s was just signaled that I'm get already getting cl short in time, so we will skip some things to the I more interesting parts. Yeah. when any value. Uh, besides of bindings, I can use when any value to uh, observe any property change. And uh, we will do it uh, in a moment here. I added a search box, f uh, a filter box to, uh, to our city list. And um, this, uh, the value of the, uh, of the edit field uh, is bound to this property. And thanks to Foodie, uh, Reactive UI.foodie, I only have to add this, uh, this attribute reactive and uh, it will automatically propagate any change. And uh, now um, I define my, uh, my, my observable I like this dot when any value, which value I want to uh, observe the uh, search text property I throttle by 500 milliseconds so that this uh, will only uh, issue an event if uh, between the, uh, the, uh, the changes of the field lies more than 500 milliseconds. Yeah? Uh, typical scenario if you have a search, uh, search field and especially if you want to call a remote service. Yeah? You don't want to call a remote service on each press, yeah? but only if the user waits a short moment. Yeah? And this is just with one line here. And then I say, text changing dot invoke command and it will execute the filter uh, command in my code. So now I have in my um, main page model, I refactored the, um, the update weather now into, um, into a function so that it can be called um, directly when we start, um, but also when an update button is hit. And at the same time, I have now this um, the search text, search text property with the 
text changing we saw just before. Exceptions row. Das ist nicht schön. Das ist nicht nice. Is it possible to use Elastic UI without the plugin? Pardon? Is it possible to use Elastic UI without the plugin? Without? Without Body. Without Body. Yeah, sure. It is. Did you use the, la the latest version? Yeah. Okay. Uh, I think you have the same problem. <laughs> no, I think I ha just uh, did not rebuild. This is the problem. Yeah. So now I can. Um, so if you say. The moment I, I wait a moment, uh, he, it will update. Nothing. And um, the nice thing, if you see, look here in the update value, because I added now a filter as parameter, all I have to do is um, to add an another uh, Rx uh, uh, processing stage with this where. So uh, that I can just uh, also use the filter uh, the, uh, the filter string inside the processing pipeline. And the last step I want to show you is, um, for example, uh, if you have multiple um, multiple tasks that should be. Uh, that uh, sh uh, should that, al that don't allow that a command is executed. For example, reactive command gives you two interesting features. One is it uh, it, uh, it publishes an is executing observable, so you can directly subscribe to an s uh, to this ex is executing observable of a command. Uh, that's like so as long as the command is running, this one will uh, first it will. Um, issue and true and then later on a false and also you can provide when the when you create the command your own observable that gives the um, the value if the command can be executed or not and if you have more than one uh, other uh, observable that should be um, take uh, taken into account you can do this easily by using a merge operation so um, you can uh, uh, you can merge different streams of events and then deal the, uh, handle them uh, as, as one event stream together. And um, I got a little bit into a hurry yet. Now I created an, um, an additional um, observable with this um, that will just issue an event every uh, every th three seconds, and um, I create this new observable can filter, and this is done by the um, the uh, peri per periodic executed command, the is ex executing merge with the update command, with the update button, is executing, and it only should issue a uh, value 
if it's uh, if it changes because I don't want to have um, if I get two times a true I don't want I want only one and as uh, because I want you uh, want to know uh, not that um, the um, that this one um, issues busy flags I invert it with a select so that now it awaits uh, it uh, issues a true every time that say okay I can filter and um, Yep. And so I'm the first one who. Okay, now you see um, that every time the periodic, periodic command is uh, is happening, um, up there the uh, the edit field is disabled, and if I push the update button, it also disabled at the same time. You see uh, down here the timer event when it happens, and the can filter. I made a subscription also to this, to this can filter uh, that it, uh, that outputs if it's true or false. Okay. Okay, you find a lot of resources on the reactive uh, UI.net and also a lot of uh, videos on this. And we have also an, uh, a, a separate Slack, Slack channel. You can, re uh, you can get an invi invitation by uh, registering to the newsletter on the, uh, on the website. Rx and reactive UI, it's, it's really, it requires a big change in the way you write programs. But uh, in the past, I, uh, Especially if you uh, if you have a lot of events from uh, your uh, from your hardware that can come asynchronously, it's way easier to deal with it. With, uh, with it. So if every any more question on this, I will be over there um, during the last uh, session, I think, because I'm not an Android developer. <laughs> uh, I think you are. The, aren't you the? the Ah, the one, 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 yeah. Okay. Yeah. Tobias? Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah.